Welcome to Introduction to Basin's Watershed Characterization System webinar. This webinar series is produced by the Water Protection Division, TMDL Development Section, EPA Region 4. The purpose of this webinar is to give you an overview of the Watershed Characterization System, which is a plug-in to EPA's Basin's system. The purpose of WCS is to characterize any subbasin watershed within the GIS framework. The types of data that the WCS needs is census data, NPDES coverages, in other words, where point sources are located, soils, whether it's Statsco or Sergo, land use coverages, whether it is the national land cover data system or user defined or local governments. And what the tool does is for any polygon, it can characterize what's within that polygon, such as uh, the number of people, the number of septic systems, how much of the land use is urban agricultural. It can also generate a report that can provide detailed information for modeling purposes, such as percentages of, of what soil types are in each subbasin, the percentage or area of each land use type that's in a subbasin, and the location of where point sources are. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, give an overview uh, demonstrating how you would use the characterization system within the basins framework. We've assumed that you've already created a basins project. For information on how to create a basins project, see a previously created webinar. We're going to be looking at a watershed that's located in South Georgia, northern Florida. Uh, we're looking at two Huck 8s, where we're going to set up a, uh, a watershed model to uh, predict loadings to a lake, which, which is right down in here. Now, uh, we need to give the watershed characterization some information. And the first thing is it needs to know the areas in which it's going to do the characterization on. So if you just really wanted to know what the land use types, soil types, and what point sources are in this subbasin here, you could actually use the hub coverage. But for our analysis here, we're going to be doing a land use and a soil characterization for a watershed model. So what I have here is I have delineated subbasins um, for the LSPC model. So for each one of these polygons on the screen, we're going to be able to do a characterization for. So we'll get a report for each one of them. One of the requirements for the watershed characterization system is that each one of the polygons have a unique identifier associated with it. So if I highlight the LSPC basin and I open up the table attribute, we'll see that we have an LSPC subbasin number. And this is a unique number for all the polygons. And these are the, uh, the identifiers that we're going to use in the watershed model, but we're also going to use it in the characterization. So with that, there's our basins. So the, things that, the other coverage that we need, if we're going to get a report on the point sources in the area, we need a point source coverage. And I'm just happening to be using the one that's packaged with basins. But if you, again, if you have your own coverage, you can, you can add it in here and link it up. We're also going to need uh, state soils. In this case, this is a Statsco coverage, again, that comes uh, with uh, the basin's basic download. And then lastly, I would have used the data download tool to bring in the 2001 national land cover data set. And it, we're going to use all of this information to get a report on what point sources, what land use types, and uh, what soil types are in each one of these polygons. So with that information loaded on, we're going to go ahead and invoke the watershed characterization system, which is a plugin in the basins tool. It's located on an analysis down towards the bottom, watershed characterization system. And you'll get a you'll get a parameterization screen. And the first thing that you're going to have to tell it is, okay, what is the polygon coverage that we're going to do the report over? So in my case here, I was using my LSPC subbasin coverage. And then I need to know what the unique identifier is in the subbasin coverage. And we only have one, and that's the LSPC subbasin number. The next, we have to tell it which reports we want to create. So we have several that we can create. I did not bring down the coverages for the Water Bodies 303D report. Um, this was based on some legacy information that Office of Water used to provide, and it's really not available anymore. But if you downloaded the census data, you could get population estimates for each one of your subbasins, housing and, and sewage uh, estimates from the census data. 
But really, what the ones that we're interested in doing is we're going to do a soil characterization. And again, we're going to use the state soils that comes down, which is StatsGo. Uh, and because this is a prepackaged, the, w, uh, the Water Resources Database already knows how to uh, line stuff up. So we'll turn that on. The next one is the uh, land use classification, and we're going to use the uh, NLCD, but we can use other information. It could be, uh, you know, local government information, user specified information, but we'll use just the national land use classification data. And again, it knows uh, all the fields in here, so it will do the parameterization based on the land use IDs that are associated with that coverage. And then lastly, we're going to go get. NPDES permitting information and again we're going to use a coverage that's supplied with the basins download which will basically give us pertinent information about the facility. So the next thing that we would do is we would go ahead and click generate and what WCS is doing in the background this process may take for a watershed this size maybe 10 to 15 minutes it's going through each one of those sub basins and it's calculating the soils uh, that are associated with that sub basin the area the land use and the land use types that are associated uh, with that subbasin, and then any point sources. So we're going to let this truck on until the report uh, is ready for us to view. Okay, the characterization is completed. It took about 10 minutes to uh, complete uh, this uh, fairly large watershed. So it creates a report that basically has the information that we requested, soils information, land use information, and point source information. For each, for the soils, for each one of the subbasins, it gives us each of the hydrologic soil groups that were found in that subbasin and the area that was associated with it. So we can use this information to parameterize a watershed model. So we would have this information for every one of those polygons uh, in the watershed coverage. And if, once it's through the soils, we get down to the land use. And the same thing for each one of the land use types, we get all of, or each one of the subbasins, we get each land use that's in that subbasin with its associated area. And this report comes one or two ways where we have subbasin and the land use is going down and the area that's associated with it. And then another report for the same, that has the same information, but it goes a different way down at the bottom. It, uh, has our subbasin and then the area associated with each one of the land uses uh, going forward. And depending upon which watershed model you need, it's sometimes it's easier to use this this one or the one above it. And I'll show just how you would get this data out of here in a second. And then the last thing we have is the point source information. So for each one of the subbasins where there's a point source, we have our subbasin number, the permit that's associated with the facility, facility name, what kind of discharger they are, who is the municipality or industry that owns it, whether it's a major or minor, and then what water body it discharges to. So we have this report here, and you know this is good because you can uh, use this for reports and other things, but you also can copy this whole report, go into Excel, and paste it, and then you would be able to process this data out any way you want to. So it's a pretty handy uh, method for, for looking at uh, watersheds and getting information that you would need for modeling or, for that matter, just to assess potential uh, sources in the area. So that's it for the uh, watershed characterization system. You can you know, run this uh, report as many times as you like as you refine stuff, and the reports are stored uh, inside your project directory in basins.